bringing this together because I think these kind of events are really important to come together to share ideas and inspire each other. I was thinking about what I might say about the, yeah, the concept of walking the talk. And um, so I was reminded of a realisation I had when I was a teenager. So my father's Hungarian. He left in 1956. They had the uprising against the Russian occupation. So my father was a young man who was involved in the fighting. Um, he fled like so many Hungarians. Many were killed. Tens of thousands were killed, but many, probably more than that, fled. He became a refugee um, and moved to England. He couldn't go home for a long time because he was worried about being arrested and executed, as they continued to do. And so my grandparents didn't meet my brother and myself until quite a long time after we were born. But things calmed down over time and eventually it settled down and we were able to go back. So when I was uh, a teenager, 14, my parents sent me to live with my grandparents in Hungary to learn the real, to learn our wayata, to learn our culture, meet our whānau, so, we could know, so I could know who I was as a Hungarian. And I really honoured that time. And of course, at the time, Hungary was behind the communist... Yeah, it was a communist country. It was behind the Iron Bloc, uh, the, the Iron Curtain. And I really got to understand what it meant to be an oppressed people. And when I say oppressed, I don't mean like the government asking you nicely to wear a mask <laughs> to prevent the spread of <laughs> infectious diseases or putting in place some rules to stop the spread of a pandemic. I'm talking about a society where you had to carry ID with you wherever you went, where uh, certain music was not allowed, certain books were not allowed, certain conversations were not allowed. That's what it meant to be in Hungary at that time. And I thought a lot about freedom and what it meant. And I came to the view that freedom is actually a really scary concept for people. That we talk about it a lot, but being free is actually incredibly scary because what it means is taking responsibility for your own choices. When you are free, you make decisions and you live with the consequences of those decisions. And you can't blame other people for what happens as a result. And that's actually quite a frightening concept. And um, to me, that's what leadership is as well. And so, you know, I acknowledge people standing. Current, you know, we've got an MP, Kelly Allen, who's a fantastic representative for our local area. We've got, um, you know, Meredith is standing. We've got um, people. Sorry, I'm not standing. <laughs> people who are putting themselves up for leadership positions, um, with all of that entails, and they're a very difficult role. They're a role where there's, it's a pretty thankless task, to be honest. You get quite a lot of abuse and opprobrium from the public for making decisions. You have to make hard decisions. There's no easy decisions in politics, and you have to live with the consequences of those. And so I really honour people who put themselves up for those kind of roles. And we live in a time where leadership is so critical. We know that climate change is happening. People have been arguing about it for long enough, but we know climate change is real. It's happening faster than we thought possible. We know that the web of life is not just untangling it, we are, sh we are shredding it around us through our actions as human beings. We know that inequality is growing globally, and in our own country, inequality is reaching a state which is untenable. There are people living in cars in our country and there are people with so much money they don't know what to do about it. We know that global instability is growing. We've got political instability. We know that we face enormous challenges. And if we want to have control over our own communities and what happens in our communities, we have to exercise leadership in our communities. And that means all of us. So... We all exercise leadership in our lives. Every day we exercise leadership in all the minute decisions we make, minute by minute. And, um, and of course I'm here to encourage you to vote in the election and to vote for our leaders and to uh, vote for the Green Party in particular. Yeah. Um, and, and particularly Party Vote Green, of course I'm here to say that to you. But I'm here to say something beyond that, which is that my challenge is, to, is for all of us to exercise leadership in our whānau, in our marae committees, in our school boards, in our community boards, in our local councils. I'm not saying everyone's got to stand for parliament. I'm saying that we all need to look at the lives that we live and what are the opportunities that we all have
to step just a little bit higher than we do now. Just to step up, step up one rung to start to exercise leadership. Because it's so critical that we have people who understand the challenges that we face and are prepared to do something about it. And when we have that leadership in place, it unlocks the world around us in an incredible way. And just as an example, so I'm, I'm on the Whakatane District Council, I'm elected council on Whakatane District Council. And when I was first elected, there was a complete uh, lack of leadership on the kind of ecological issues in our council. And we had staff desperate to do work, doing work, putting it up, and it was going nowhere because they didn't have the leadership. And just by having one voice around the table changed everything. It gave those people permission to do their work, to put it forward. It gave our whole organisation permission to start to turn and make these things a priority. So we're looking at, we've, we've done an energy order on or our organisation. We have a, a plan to move forward. How are we going to address energy? How are we going to reduce our carbon emissions? And it all comes from having uh, leadership that gives the organisation permission to do that. So when you step into those roles, you're not there on your own. As Dave said, you know, the world is turning. There is a massive move for transformation. And young people in particular are desperate for transformation. And it's our responsibility, I think, to step up into that and make something happen. And so, you know, leadership is... So yes, elect great leaders. But we have to step up into leadership ourselves, every single one of us. Because if we want to have a future, it's up to...